Hi, my name is Carly and welcome to Arise's Sermon of the Week. We hope that you experience God as you listen to this message and that you find practical ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus within your community. So let's open up our spiritual ears as we listen to this message. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Brent, and I get the privilege of being the lead pastor here at Arise Church, and welcome to Arise TV. We are going to continue to experience God together today through another amazing cinematic message. I hope you enjoy it. And as we get started, I always want to celebrate, and I just want to take a quick minute to celebrate Mike Braddock. Like, you have been enjoying these cinematic messages. I've heard all kinds of cool stories about it, but what you don't know is that behind the scenes, Pastor Mike, our South Shore campus pastor, has been kicking butt and making this happen, working his tail off. So everybody give Pastor Mike a big thumbs up and a heart. Not only, by the way, has he been doing that for our church, but he's been working with a lot of other churches as well, helping them get their live stream up and running. And so I'm just so proud of Pastor Mike, so glad he's a part of our team, especially during this unique season. Hey, with that being said, let me turn it over to my wife who's going to read the scripture as we go into this message today. Hello everyone, will you open or turn on your Bible with me and let's read today's passage found in Acts chapter 14 verses 8 through 20. Now at Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking and Paul looked intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand up on your feet, and he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of light nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave himself without witness. For he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they were scarcely restrained, the people, from offering sacrifice to them. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city, and on the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derby. Now join Pastor Brent for this week's amazing cinematic message. So it was a number of years ago and I was going through a really difficult season and I was tired and exhausted, the same way a lot of you feel right now, to be honest. And I was running one night, it was back when I was triathlon training and I would go for these long runs. And as I was miles away from the house, I started to feel the temperature change as I was coming back towards the house and you recognize that a storm is on the way. And probably a half mile from the house or so, the rains started to come down and here I am running and there's nowhere to go. At this point, it was it was midnight or at least late at night and I'm running and it just starts raining and you can't hide under a tree. I can't go to somebody's carport and hide. And I'm just stuck running in the rain. And in that moment, I thought, what in the world can I do? Where can I go? And there was nothing I could do. I just had to keep running. Listen, all great men and women of God go through seasons in their life where they feel like they have to just keep running in the rain. There are moments that are going to stink in the middle of your life. Listen, God said he will send rain on the just and the unjust. So if if we think that because we are Christian and we love Jesus and because we're trying to do right by other people that we're not going to have rain hit us, then we are sorely mistaken. Listen, we will have rain inside of our lives. The question is not, will we have rain in our lives? The question is, how will we respond to the rainy seasons that come in our lives? See, the Acts 14 account started so good for Paul and Barnabas, right? 
Paul heals this crippled beggar and the people in the streets seem quite happy with Paul. Everything is great. They get excited and they start speaking in Lyconium, their native language, that Paul doesn't understand and they seem so happy with him and excited for them and Paul's like, great, this is awesome. The gospel is primed and ready to be preached and he's going to do what he's always done before, right? But just then they realize that what they're saying in Lyconium is that they're referring to Paul and Barnabas as gods. Zeus and Hermes. Check it out. They're thinking that Zeus and Hermes has come down in the flesh. And despite Paul's best efforts to explain things, they end up stoning him and dragging him out of the city thinking he was dead. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Let me just take you on a quick journey because that's the way some of us feel about 2020 so far. I mean, it started out so good and then it turned into Jumanji, right? See, this year started out like the account of Paul and Barnabas started. It was good, everything was great, and not that everything was perfect by any means, but things were good. Some days are good, the future seems okay. Listen, the church was good. We cast vision for this year. We talked about how we were gonna be creating the future, and I still say we are. And we poured out pennies all over the stage that represented each life that had been impacted by a rise. Do y'all remember that? Listen, it was awesome. It was a good sermon. Listen, I spiked my Bible. I chest bumped the worship leaders. Listen, I high-fived the youth pastor. 2020 was off to a great start. We were optimistic about the year. (laughs) And then somebody started playing Jumanji on us, right? First of all, we had a, a presidential impeachment trial going on, followed by the death of Kobe Bryant dying in this shocking helicopter crash that affected so many. And then there were wildfires. And then COVID-19 hit. And all of a sudden the NBA season stopped and the MLB season, baseball season, uh, stopped before it ever got underway. And so many of us kind of looked around and went, okay, is this for real? And the country was put on lockdown. People started getting COVID and people started dying during this global pandemic that started coming all around us. And then there was a financial crisis that came and it seemed imminent that finances were going to be doomed and and it caused unprecedented fear and terror among so many people as they started to lose their job and their finances were in jeopardy. And then coming right out of that, you had the Ahmaud Arbery murder followed immediately by a horrific public murder of George Floyd and the protests across America that started out so good and then they started leading into rioting and looting and the destruction of property. Listen, this has been an unprecedented year. Does anybody else feel like Paul in Acts 14? You know, I think of Ron Burgundy this year. I think, oh my goodness, that escalated quickly. Listen, things went from January to Jumanji overnight and suddenly and unexpectedly, life started throwing rocks at you. Rocks of injustice, rocks of anger, rocks of financial fear. Rocks of isolation, rocks of brokenheartedness, rocks of confusion, and rocks started flying everywhere. And for the most part, these rocks aren't even consequences of our own actions. You didn't do anything to cause these rocks. They came from others. You know, it's one thing if I do something that causes me harm and so I have to live with my own consequences of my actions. But in this case, for the most part, they didn't come from your decisions. They came from life around you, throwing rocks at you. And so often these crises were laid on top of the personal crises you were already facing coming into 2020. Listen, if you had a crisis in your marriage or your family or with your children, that was already coming. And so you have these rocks coming at you from all over the place. And you know what? I think I can handle one rock, maybe two, maybe even three. But people die from being stoned when many rocks start being thrown at them all at once. And that's where we are right now in America. That's where we are, we're stuck, we're paralyzed, and we're being pelted by rocks. Sitting back, as so many of us have wondered, going, what's next? What's the next rock to come at us? There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide, there's no shelter in sight. Just grin and bear it and pray that we can withstand one more blow. Oh, hey, and by the way, hurricane season starts this month. So like Paul, we're running into rainstorms of rocks. So since we're in a similar position as Paul, let me give you four thoughts from Paul's account on how we can survive this storm. Number one, it's not over. 
The second half of verse 19 says, they stoned Paul and they dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead, right? They thought he was dead and they drug his body and threw it out of the city like a dead animal carcass. Paul is in bad shape. It looked bad. Paul is lying there, blood all over him and broken, hardly breathing, probably pain over his entire body. Dirt is filling his open sores. Blood is caked in his ears and his eyes are swollen, probably almost shut. The taste of blood is what he's tasting in his mouth at this moment. You know, some scholars actually believe that Paul did die there. And it's when the disciples came around him that they raised him back to life. The simple fact is they thought he was dead and they threw his body out. It looked over. And if you're Paul, you probably felt like it was over. But listen, rocks don't get to determine when you die. God is the Alpha and the Omega, and He will determine when it's over. Not any rocks that are thrown at you. Listen, the fat lady may be singing, but until you hear angels singing, it is not over. Your, bo your body may be broken, and you may feel like it's over. Your emotions may be exhausted. Come on, somebody. And you feel like it's over. Your mind may even desire it to be over because you're so tired. But the next word, the next part of the verse uses this big word right here. It uses the word, but. And that is a big but. Look at your neighbor and say they got a big but. <laughs> that is a big but. That is a little word with a big impact. It changes everything. And you may feel like death warmed over, but it's not over. And it's time we get back up on our feet. So how do we do that? We do that in community. So we need community. In fact, verse 20 starts out like this. But when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up. Listen, when everybody got around him, that's when he rose up. We were built for community. We're stronger together than we ever are apart. And when rocks start flying, that becomes more real to us than ever before. In fact, one of the hardest things for so many of us while we're in this crisis is us not being able to come together. We have no one to help us through this hard time. We have no one to walk through us and strengthen us and, 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 and carry us when we can't carry ourselves and when our strength is gone to bring strength to us, to bring courage to us when we don't have it. We are isolated in the midst of this pain and uncertainty. We need somebody to talk to. We need someone to tell us that it's going to be okay. We need a community to process the pain with. See, the church being closed during this time is one of the hardest things because we need one another. But when this crisis hits, what happens so often is many of us turn into Rambo, right? We turn into a one-man army. Instead of leaning into community, we lean into isolation and we try to fight it ourselves. We try to fight the battles all by ourselves. And there may be some fights that you can get away with that with, but right now, in the middle of where we are, it's actually leading a whole lot of people to weariness and depression. See, that's why you need to join a Zoom group. That's why even though I know some people are like, well, I don't want to do that and it's not the same. I know it's not the same, but right now, that is what you need. You need that community, even if it's digital, because you need people that care about you and pray with you and can walk with you. You need that connection, even if it's not face-to-face. -face. And I am so excited to be able to announce to you and tell you, if you haven't heard the news, that we will be gathering back together on June 20th and 21st, June 20th at 7 p.m. for our Rise India campus, June 21st and Rise Brandon at 9 and 11 and sorry, South Shore at 10 a.m. and back to the normal times and get back together because we will be reunited and it will feel so good to be back together. And I can't wait to see you face to face. The third thing I want you to see is this incredible perseverance that Paul had. Verse 20, the second half says, he rose up and entered the city. Check this out. Paul got up and walked right back into the same city that he had just been stoned in. So I just wanna say this, don't quit. Don't quit. Listen, just like the great theologian Dory would say, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Just keep swimming. See, swimming is really an interesting illustration because when you are swimming, what you're really doing is taking the water that's in front of you, cupping it in your hand, and one little stroke at a time, pushing water behind you. Taking what's in front of you and moving it to behind you, and that's actually what propels you. See, when the rocks are coming, sometimes all you can do is take what's in front of you and move it behind you. 
minute by minute, day by day, hour by hour, I don't know. But that's all you can do sometimes in the middle of a crisis like this. You can't look any further ahead. See, you aren't worried about getting through this month or this year sometimes. You're just trying to get through today. I know, because I feel you. See, you'll let tomorrow worry about tomorrow, which by the way, is something Jesus mentioned, but that's for another message. So just keep putting what's in front of you behind you. Refuse to quit. Listen, I know the pain is real. I know that the racial pain is real. I know that the financial fear is real. I know that the uncertainty of the future is real. But if you throw up your hands and check out now, you will never see what God has on the other side of the valley. Listen, it's been said before, the race is not given to the swift or the battle to the strong, but to him who endures till the end. And there are some moments that overcoming simply means enduring. It's overcoming each second, each minute, each hour, and ultimately each day. And you were built to endure. So don't you dare quit in the middle of this. The psalmist said that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Don't quit during the night and miss the morning. Why? Because this is my last thing I want you to see. It will get better. The very end of verse 20, going into verse 21, that I purposely didn't read at first, says this. And on the next day, he went with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel in that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch. I want you to see it. So when they went to the very next city, they preached and tons of people got saved. Tons of people became disciples. See, it may seem like it's over right now in the middle of this. While you are at Lystra, it might feel like it's over, they tried to kill me. But the very next city that Paul entered and preached in, they made disciples. Listen, this flood is not final. The rains will come and the floods will come and the rocks will come. But if you hold on, it will get better. Out of these ashes will rise a new season. Fresh ideas and new opportunities will come to those who keep getting up time and time again. You know, all this rain is reminding me of Noah, right? Noah was trapped in an ark with his stinky animals and his family and his in-laws for literally a year. And you think being trapped in your house is hard. See, it was a rocky and painful time for Noah. But when he finally came out, he found a rainbow. <laughs> you see, there is a rainbow after the rain to remind each of us that it's not over. Just look at your neighbor right now and say, it's not over. Listen, I know times are tough. I know that you've seen bad days, but better days are ahead. It's always darkest just before dawn. And I personally believe that we are on the cusp of a great revival. And I want you and I to be right in the middle of it. See, here's the fact. You are going to tell stories to your kids and grandkids and maybe great grandkids one day about 2020. We are in an epic season. This is the craziest season in American history. It goes beyond 1968, which was crazy. So you're gonna tell your kids and grandkids and great grandkids and beyond stories about this. What stories are you gonna tell them? Let's tell them how we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Let's tell them how we moved forward against adversity. Let's tell them how we refused to quit. Let's tell them how we are still standing before them today because we kept running even amidst the rain. We kept running even amidst the rocks. Listen, life is hard. Life is hard, but God is good. And he is our hope. And so we turn our attention to him. So some people listening to this right now, some people watching this, like you are literally drowning. You know this scene so well with the rain because you feel like you are drowning. And that reminds me of this guy by the name of Peter who tried to walk on the water. And he sunk in the water and he probably felt like he was drowning too. And in that moment, he cried out to this master, this rabbi, this Jewish Messiah named Jesus. And he said, Lord, save me. And I want you to see this. He could cry out to Jesus because the only person that was in the water with him who could help was Jesus. He couldn't cry out, Thomas, help me. He couldn't cry out, James, help me. Jesus was the only other one in the water with him. And all I can tell you is this, my friend, in the middle of the rain that you're running through, in the middle of the rocks being thrown at you, Jesus is with you. And if you call out to him, 
He will answer. He will rescue you. Does that mean everything's gonna be suddenly perfect? Of course not. But it does mean you can have hope and security of your soul. So before we wrap everything up, I just wanna pray with you. And if you are just giving your life to Christ in a second, I'm gonna invite you to, to reach out to us. But right this second, if you wanna give your life to Christ, if you're walking through hell right now and rocks are being thrown at you and I don't even know how to handle this, take a moment and I wanna pray over you. Father, I pray for every person that's watching this right now. Lord, that life would begin inside of them, that a surrendered heart would be placed before you and you would take that heart, God, that you would transform it into something beautiful, something great. Where there was not hope, put hope. Where there was uncertainty, put certainty. Where there was brokenness, heal it. And Lord, you are the one who restores lives and transforms hearts. So God, we place our life into your hands right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, or maybe you just want more people to, to, to be with you right now. When I was talking about community and you just need somebody to talk to or somebody to pray with you, then I want to encourage you to call our prayer line. Listen, the number is 813-609-2783. You see it right here underneath me. Call that prayer line and let somebody agree with you in prayer. Let somebody believe in you. You're not built to handle these storms alone. You need a community and we want to be part of that community for you. So let us pray with you, agree with you, and encourage you during this season. Now with that being said, let me hand this off to Pastor Joshua as he wraps everything up. Hey guys, wasn't that such an amazing message? If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow our podcast. Also, make sure to share this with your friends on social media and use the hashtag MyAriseChurch. For more information or to give to this ministry, go to MyAriseChurch.com. I hope to see you guys soon.